The key difference between enantiomers occurs at atoms that are attached to four different groups, and these are typically carbons. We call these stereocenters because they're the center of stereochemistry. In E and F, the key carbon is this one with the wedges and dashes drawn off of it. It possesses bonds to four different groups, CH3, CH2, H, and OH. The arrangement of the four different groups around this key stereocenter leads to the enantiomeric relationship between E and F. We call this arrangement the configuration of the stereocenter, and two unique configurations are always possible. In E, we have one configuration where with the CH3 on the left and the CH2 on the right, the H is in the back and the OH is coming out. In F, we have what's called the opposite configuration, where now the CH3 and CH2 are still in the same positions as in E, but the OH is now in the back and the H in the front. You'll notice that if we exchange the H and the OH, then we can generate E from F. Same with E to F. We can take the H and E, exchange it with the OH, and generate F from E. The hallmark of a stereocenter is that exchanging two of the groups leads to a different molecule, which is a stereoisomer of the original. In fact, although you may not expect it, sp2 carbons may also be stereocenters, and in this case we have an example of trans-cis isomerism. When we switch the positions of the CH3 and the H off of this blue stereocenter here, we end up generating a diastereomer, right? Here's the trans compound where the CH3s are opposite the double bond. Here's the cis compound where the two CH3s are on the same side of the double bond. There are a few conventions that chemists use to specify configuration for tetrahedral compounds and for alkenes. These are all based on the idea of prioritizing the substituents around the key stereocenter by atomic number. So I'll show you an example here of how organic chemists classify tetrahedral configurations around tetrahedral stereocenters. So if we start with the molecule on the left here, the first step of this process is to prioritize the four substituents around the key stereocenter here in the middle. To prioritize, we give the number one to the atom of highest atomic number, 2 to the second highest, 3 to the third highest, and 4 to the fourth highest. So in this case, we would give a 1 to the bromine, 2 to the chlorine, 3 to the fluorine, and the hydrogen would be number 4. After prioritizing, we then place the substituent of lowest priority back into the page. I've done that here, where I've essentially taken the molecule and rotated it around so that the H is pointing away from us. Again, it's still prioritized number four. And now the fluorine, bromine, and chlorine are sort of in our field of vision and forming sort of a peace sign shape, like this. Again, the priorities on those are one for the bromine, two for the chlorine, and three for the fluorine. Now, after making that prioritization, we look at the direction of rotation from highest to lowest priority and ask, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? If it's counterclockwise, as it is on the left, we designate the stereocenter as possessing the S configuration. On the other hand, if the direction of rotation is clockwise, as it is in the right-hand case, then we designate the stereocenter the R configuration, and I like to remember this as R going to the right on top and S going to the left on top. You'll notice that to interchange these two configurations, what do we need to do? We need to exchange the bromine and the chlorine, right? Exchanging those two atoms will convert S to R and will convert R to S. There's a second convention for labeling alkenes that can't just be described by simple cis-trans terms, and that's called the EZ convention. It's still based on prioritization, but the process is just a little bit different. 
So the first step is to prioritize the two groups on one of the sp2 carbons. So let's start with this sp2 carbon on the left here and prioritize the two substituents. Well, this is a carbon, this is a hydrogen, therefore we would give the carbon number one and the hydrogen number two based on atomic number. We then do the same thing for the other sp2 hybridized carbon. And here we see that both of the atoms immediately off of the double bond are carbons. But if we go one step further to the next step, we see that the first point of difference is a hydrogen on the lower substituent and a carbon on the upper substituent. Thus, we would give the higher priority here to the isopropyl group and a lower priority to the methyl group below. We then ask, are the high priority groups on the same or opposite sides of the double bond, similar to the question we asked in cis-trans isomerism, right? What we see in the left-hand structure is that the higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. This is a telltale sign of the E configuration. On the other hand, in the right-hand structure, the higher priority isopropyl and phenyl groups are on the same side of the double bond. This is an indication that the Z isomer is present.